Good morning. My name is Jennifer Ryan, and on behalf of the Alliance of Women and Workers' Compensation, I want to welcome you to today's webinar. Today is titled, Pitching Your Purpose with Kendra Davies, will last approximately one hour and is a pre-recorded session from our WCI conference event being broadcasted today, Thursday, March 24th, 2022. Before we get started, I would like to thank our 2022 corporate sponsors for their support on hosting events such as this. They support us not because they want their logos up on a screen, but they support the cause, which is to affect positive change in the workers' compensation industry through networking, support, mentoring, and collaboration. The Alliance is inclusive of all professionals in workers' compensation, regardless of career stage, with the belief that we can all learn from and support each other. Be sure to head to the AWWC website for all upcoming events. We are excited to be hosting webinars, collaboration sessions, as well as seven in-person events throughout 2022. Be sure to check back on our website for registration details. If you could not make one of our live, virtual, or in-person events, don't worry. Webinars and our four main events will be recorded and on demand for our followers. Our theme this year is Acknowledge, Adjust, Advance. Each quarter, our webinars and events will be centered around each mini theme. This quarter, we focus our topics around leading with intention. Be sure to join in these discussions as we facilitate both virtual and in-person events. I'm also excited to share with you today that we launched our AWWC book club. Love reading books? Be sure to head to the AWWC website to join the club. Interested in becoming an ambassador for the Alliance? We are seeking candidates from a variety of backgrounds, geographies, industries, organizational roles, and skills. Our selection criteria will place strong emphasis on certain geographies, the carrier industry, various roles within the industry, and demographic diversity. You can apply now on the AWWC website. Change is preceded by trust. It is through acceptance and inclusion that trust will be formed and positive impact will occur. The Alliance is committed to creating a safe place in the workers' compensation industry for women of diverse backgrounds and experiences through a shared culture that integrates various perspectives. This is who we are and who we will be. The time to do better is now. The Alliance understands that diversity is a journey that will take time to make meaningful changes for our organization, its followers, and supporters. We will be intentional in making progress along our key pillars of change. Understanding the science of positive psychology is not enough. Putting positive psychology and the power of positive into action is the goal. Kendra will help you identify the ways in which you are wonderful. Reframing your thinking to focus on I am in your positive terms. Reinforcing your strengths, attributes, and confidence. All of this is necessary if you are truly pitching your purpose to drive the desired outcome. Fear is a powerful and important emotion and can also be limiting to your personally and professionally. How do you overcome limiting beliefs about what you are capable of or if you don't believe you are worthy and deserving? With Kendra's keynote, the audience will learn how fear can fuel success. Kendra's session supports a healthier and happier work environment where you are empowered to bring your best self to work and in turn, empower others to be their best. Kendra differentiates herself and her content by combining her own lived experience with research supported by the field of positive psychology. Kendra will be back with the Alliance supporting our ongoing work around pitching our purpose at the EWC conference April 27th. Be sure to head to the AWWC website to register for this upcoming event. As this is a pre-recorded webinar, please feel free to comment and ask questions through the Zoom chat feature on your screen. We love seeing the engagement of our followers during our session. Thank you for the time you're spending with us today, and we hope you enjoy this webinar. So y'all are so far back, and I'm an energy gal, yeah? So can we do just a small exercise just to make sure we can flex our energy muscles? Can you stand up? Yeah. And just stretch out your arms, shake them out. Shake them out because the energy that we need to pitch a purpose is a bit different than the elevator pitch itself. So shake it out. Shake out your legs. Liven it up.
you know what happens when you move your body? You shift the energy in your body. You change the energy of a room when you move. Yeah? So thank you. All right. I'm going to try to stay up here, uh, but I'm warning you, I'm probably going to hop down and get in here because I need, I need to feel you, yes? I'm not in yoga pants, y'all. You're welcome. Okay? You guys can sit. Thank you, for, thank you for shifting the energy in the room for me. My name is Kendra Davies. I am a positive psychology practitioner. I own a company called Stellar Life Coaching, and I am super, super excited to be with you today. I'm going to talk about pitching your purpose. For this particular exercise, I am talking about an elevator pitch, but not the one that you think about. I'm talking about the pitch that you give you to pump you up before you sell yourself to other people. So the reason why I think that this is important and the reason why this ties together with positive psychology is that what we think even to ourselves matters. Right? So uh, Michelle was talking about disputing your thoughts. There's actually a research study uh, done at Harvard and they coined it the Tetris effect. And what they did was they had college students play Tetris, yes, for hours on hand. They send them away, they bring them back two weeks later and they say, what did playing Tetris so much do for you? How did it shift for you? And these college students said, I'd be driving down the road and I'd look at the horizon and I'd think to myself, if I could fold, fold it in half, I could make a straight line like in Tetris, yes? And then they were like uh, at the grocery store, I'd be in the cereal aisle and if I could just turn the Wheaties on their side, I could make a straight line like in Tetris. And so what they got from this study is that the Tetris effect is what occurs when people devote sufficient time and attention to an activity and it begins to overshadow their thoughts, mental images, and dreams. So what we think to ourselves matters. For this exercise, I know you can apply it at work, but I wanna ask you to apply it to yourself. You're a whole person everywhere you go. I'm not a big fan of work-life uh, balance. I believe in balance, just balance. So take a moment and I want you to ask yourself, what are the dominant thoughts you have about yourself. Are they positive? When you catch a glance of yourself in the mirror, what is the thought that you have? Is the first thought you have, wow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Odds are it is not. And what happens when we have these thoughts over and over and over again, and they go unchecked, is we have this subtle undercurrent, no matter how good our lives are, no matter how much connection, no matter how much money we make, no matter how great our relationships seem on the surface, when we have this undercurrent of negative self-talk in our head, we feel disconnected, unfulfilled. The goodness doesn't seem as good and the colors don't seem as bright. So today's session is all about challenging those thoughts and remembering who you are. So uh, we learned a lot today about positive psychology. I'm just going to drop a few other nuggets before we get right into the pitch. I want to bring to light the negativity bias. Sorry. Thank you. That, that was fun. Did you see that? I had a whole gaggle of people going like this. <laughs> So it's important to know that we have a negativity bias. Your negativity bias is a mechanism in your brain that's built in, you didn't choose it, you were born with it, we all got it, and it's part of evolution, right? If you think about it, we need to know where the threats are in life. So we have a negative experience, we have a stress reaction, that fight or flight response, it locks it into our brain, yes, and then we scan the environment forever, looking for it again. Imagine the first time you get your heart broken. What are you afraid of in the next relationship? Almost immediately, as soon as you feel love, you forebode love and you anticipate being lied to or heartbroken again, right? We scan the environment for these negative things. Positive experiences do not have the same mechanism. If you want optimism and if you want positivity, it has to be intentional. Intentional. We have to choose it. 
You have to choose to challenge the thoughts. You have to choose to understand who you are. You have to choose to pull out those truths in other people. We have to choose to invest the time and do the yoga and learn how to meditate and try things and be a beginner. Here's what we know about happiness. Yes, 50% of our happiness is genetics. This is just the way you were born. Yes, very little can be done about your genetic set point. The way I like to think about it is like when things are not great and things are not awful, it's where you tend to fall on average. Yeah? So for me, uh, I actually borderline almost on melancholy. So if I get the right song, if I re watch the right movie, like I can, I can plummet <laughs> rather quick. <laughs> in, in spite of all the knowledge, my emotional genetic state tends to sit at melancholy. So what this means for me is that I have to make a lot of intentional choices. If you ask me what my daily practices are, it includes journaling, meditation, prayer, yoga, talking with my friends. I spend two hours a week with my therapist. What about you? <laughs> yes? I spend a lot of intentional time and effort maintaining my emotional balance. 10% of happiness is gonna be circumstances, yes? And if I was to ask anybody in the room, what do you want most out of life? We say, I wanna be happy. And when I ask you, what do you put before that? When I get blank, I'm gonna be happy. What is it? We say money, we say the cars, the body, the house, the things. Even if you got all that, you're only gonna be 10% happier. Ain't that, that's some, that's some bad news, huh? <laughs> but here's the good news. 40% of your happiness is intentional choice. The things that you choose to do, that friend that you choose to call and say, man, it's hard, this sucks, I need help, hold my hand, walk me through. That decision that you made to go to CrossFit after he broke up with you, yeah? That decision, intentional, 40% happier. What happens when we begin to engage in our lives intentionally? How we feel matters. Barbara Fredrickson is a positive psychology researcher and she has a theory called broaden and build. She says that when we experience positive emotions, we have novel thoughts and experiences. When we have those novel thoughts and experiences, we build enduring resources and then we have enhanced health and fulfillment. Essentially what we're saying is that if I can make the intentional choice to engage with positive emotion, it will broaden and build my lived experience. An example that I like to give is a client of mine who, um, uh, the CrossFit story is actually his. He, he got dumped and he was in a relationship for seven years. He was sure he was gonna marry her. And when she left, he was absolutely miserable. And uh, you know, you can only go so far. Sometimes you just gotta grieve that loss. And as we were working together, I asked him to make a list of things that he would be willing to do to move his body. Again, stagnant energy, grief is energy, sadness is energy. How can you move your body? And one of the things on the list was CrossFit. So uh, he did not start at CrossFit. You know, he was like, okay, I'm gonna go to the gym. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to yoga. None of those things worked. He went to CrossFit and it clicked. And this might have happened to you too. Maybe you joined a bowling league, you know what I mean? Maybe you joined that book club and then you met that gaggle of gals that really ended up influencing all of the decisions that you would make over the next 10 years. You had this one positive experience tucked away in a seemingly innocuous choice to do something different or new. And it shifts the trajectory of your life, yeah? That is the magic. What I wanna talk about today is how do you access that in a moment? How do you pull it into now, today, any day, any moment? So when we talk about an elevator pitch, what matters most to me as a coach when I'm trying to talk to anybody, and I don't care if you're an executive, if you're a salesperson, if you're working retail, the moments before you pitch matter. Here's why. If I am bringing the energy in of, well, you know, I don't know why you would wanna to talk to me. I'm kind of average. Kendra, why, why are you the best person for the job? Well, you know, I don't, you know, I mean, I guess I'm not really, you know? I mean, I'm okay. I got great bangs. That's what they tell me, <laughs> right? 
Like that's the, <laughs> that energy, that energy, when it is in our bodies, it weighs us down. The other thing that it does when it weighs us down is it limits our perspective. It puts the blinders on. We forget who we are. We have a question in our head, why do they care about me? Why do they want to hear about me? Why do they want me? We have to actually answer that question for ourselves. And what I find is that people are very, very extraordinary at underestimating <laughs> their value in the world. So for you, I want you to come up with the elevator pitch. I want you to imagine that this session is your car ride from your house to the office, yeah? It's the house to the office. It's the playlist that's on that makes you have that dance party, karaoke party in the car, yeah? Where the windows are down, the music is loud, you're screaming the lyrics to your favorite song, and you remember in those moments you feel no fear. If you mess up the words, are you like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, Janet Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can make mistakes but you know who you are, you know you love this song, and you feel the music in your body, and you trust yourself, you know the moment. So this exercise is about knowing who you are and being able to access intentionally and with purpose that positivity about yourself. So in your workbooks, uh, after, I don't know what page, it's the note, notes page, yes? 12. I want you to think of three I am statements. These statements are supposed to be parts of your identity. Now, the world has told you what it means to be a woman, what it means to be a mother, what it means to be a boss, what it means to be a coworker. The world has told you what it is. I want you to reevaluate it for you. What are the three I am statements that represent you? I am hopeful, I am a mother, I'm a photographer, I'm a valedictorian. That's a true story, by the way. I did that, right? What are your three I am statements? Get descriptive. I'm a badass ballroom dancer, also true. <laughs> Own it. What are your three I am statements? Be boastful. You know, we often have to battle this thought that says, I'm gonna sound arrogant if I talk about how awesome I am. Here's the thing, I'm not gonna know how awesome you are if you don't ever tell me. Do you understand? It is 2021, I live in Brady Bunch boxes. Y'all, for real, I've got this outfit on and I was like, I, I literally took tags off of everything I have on this morning. I have not worn real clothes <laughs> in so long. If we want to be seen and known for who we are, we must be comfortable talking about it. We are in a virtual world. We are colleagues amongst colleagues. How do we differentiate ourselves? It is our ability to communicate. And if I can hold enough space to say, you know what? Listen, I don't think that I'm better than you. I don't think that I'm less than you, but I do believe that I'm awesome. And I also believe that you're awesome. I wanna know how awesome you are, and I don't wanna feel bad about feeling good about myself. When we create that space, we have mutual respect and understanding. When I say, tell me your story, tell me what makes you, you. Tell me why you love being you. I want you to feel good about saying it, not arrogant, not boastful, good. So think of these three I am statements. And again, it could be parts of the identity. I am a woman. Uh, it could be work-related. I am a, I'm a leader. It could be um, I am hopeful. I am optimistic. Uh, I was valedictorian, but it wasn't English, so I don't know what the name of those, is that an adjective? I don't know what that is. <laughs> three I am statements. Raise your hand when you have three. Okay, great. What is your superpower? So this is probably my favorite exercise because it is usually the most challenging for most people. I want your superpower. Your superpower is the intersection between this thing that you're good at and your passion. 
So I'm going to use dance as an example. Dance is something that I have done most of my life. Have you guys ever heard the word flow? Yeah? Flow is the thing that you do where you lose your sense of time, right? Where you can do something for two hours, but it only feels like 15 minutes. Flow is something that represents but it's something that you confident and that you can accomplish. I have clients who experience flow in gardening. I have clients that experience flow when they're public speaking. Um, for me, I experience flow when I dance. So I dance ballroom, mostly Latin dances, which are usually partnered dances. And what that means for me is that I am an excellent follow. That, that is my superpower. When I connect to another person, I can follow a slightest move of the hand, and I know what to do with my feet. I have been able to dance dances that I've never seen or even heard of just because I have a good lead. When I hear music, a funny story, I cannot clap on rhythm at all. It's like, you know, you go to a concert and everybody's like, yeah. Yeah, I'm over there off rhythm just in my own world. But I can literally dance any dance. Um, but I can dance these dances without ever even uh, trying and putting an effort. It's a superpower of mine. But here's how I want you to treat your superpower. Because oftentimes we say, okay, well, this is my superpower like at home or in private, so how does it affect me at work? For what I do for a living, my superpower is the ability to see and connect to people. Does that make sense? And I get that directly from dancing. I get that directly from this personal part of my identity. It is a part of who I am. I don't turn it off. Wherever I go, it's there, yes? I don't necessarily choose it. I walk into a room and I know that I can affect a change in the energy. And that is my superpower. What is your superpower? Do you snowboard? Do you roller skate? Do you underwater basket weave? What do we do? Yes? What are you passionate about? And how do you take this thing that you love, that brings you flow, that brings you joy, that brings you connection, how do you translate that into a skill that serves the world around you? If you've got questions, and most people do at this point, we c I will take them. If you want help breaking down your superpower, Translating it over. Anyone? Oh, I'm coming. So what if what I believe my superpower is, uh -huh. is actually something that drains me on a daily basis? Interesting. Can you tell me what it is? So empathy and reading people. Uh-huh. But that tends to draw people, which drains me. Mm. So it's very interesting. I would actually say that your superpower is probably accurate. I would say that the area of work is around boundaries. Yeah? So like my superpower is being a good follow. And we were actually having a conversation about this last night. Um, like I'm an outgoing introvert. <laughs> yes? So like you can drop me on stage in front of thousands of people. I don't, my voice won't shake. But like at the networking event last night, I was literally, I, I brought my boyfriend to be my social lubricant because I'm like, oh, hi. <laughs> it's so hard for me. And I do this for a living. I do this for a living. And being in those, so those social situations are often very, very draining. I also, because I can't shut this thing off, people want to tell me they're junk. <laughs> Which, P.S., I'm here for. Um, <laughs> But in these social situations, it means that what uh, other people might experience at a three, I'm often sitting, revving my engine at like seven and a half, nine. So I get exhausted very, very quickly and I refill my batteries by being alone. So I would encourage you to pursue boundaries, but don't hold negative perceptions of your superpower. It's a gift. We are responsible for learning how to wield it. Yes? Very good one. Another question? Okay, yeah. here's one. Oh, I like it. Make her run. You see those calves? <laughs> what if you don't have a superpower? Oh, you have a superpower. Everybody does. If we were to hold enough space, 
If we were to hold enough space uh, and ask yourself, when do you feel good? When do you feel most connected, either to, uh, if connected to yourself doesn't feel right, if it's connected to God, connected to the people that you love, um, connected to something you're passionate about. I mean, dominoes can be a superpower. Do you get what I mean? Like, uh, my grandparents, they love cards, like rummy, specifically, rummy and go fish. And so even when I did this exercise with my 97-year-old grandfather, when we were talking about it, he, we were talking about cards. And the thing is, is that my grandfather, my grandfather knows how to call a bluff. He can read people. That's his superpower. Does that make sense? So it's really a matter of distilling it down. But I believe everybody has one. Who has a superpower? Yeah. <laughs> if you didn't hear Michelle, she called her out. Michelle knows she has a superpower. Mm -hmm. Here we have a question right here. Yes. Good morning. So my question is, what if you feel like you have many superpowers? What do you do with that? Yeah, I mean, for the purposes of this exercise, sister, bring it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't mad at you. <laughs> I mean, we only have like a, like your elevator pitch is supposed to be 60 seconds, so like make it fit. But outside of that, let's go. <laughs> I'm here for that. I love that. Be connected to that. Have as many as you can. Find them. Be on the lookout. Yes? Excellent. Raise your hand if you have your superpower. Excellent. All right, for this last part, I want to know what are your two greatest accomplishments? The two things that you're most proud of. Now for this, I want you to scan your whole life. We are often tempted to only go back into the last year or two and then we say, oh man, I don't really know. I want you to scan your whole life. I'm not ashamed to tell you that in fifth grade, fifth grade, I was the sugar plum fairy and the nutcracker. Boom. <laughs> yes? There is nothing too small. Being the sugar plum fairy and the nutcracker made a huge, huge impact in my life. Even to this day, choosing dance, that was the first time I ever performed and ever danced. That moment is actually very, very significant. Easy to underestimate, but it matters. So don't be afraid to scan your whole life. Uh, raise your hand if you have kids. All right, here's a second challenge. Don't make it about your kids. I know, I know, I know, I know, but in the words of my mentors, <laughs> You cannot make your purpose a thing that actually grows up and leaves you, okay? So focus. <laughs> Bring it here. <laughs> Bring it here. What are your two greatest accomplishments for you as a human, as a woman, as a person? What are the two things you're most proud of? My hair is fabulous and has a mind of its own and loves the mic. I'm sorry, in advance. <laughs> Raise your hand if you have two accomplishments that you are most proud of. Okay, great. And I don't have a watch. What time, what time is it? It's 10.45. Oh, we good. have lots of time. Okay, great. Yep. Okay, so here we go. This is mine. I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to give you a few minutes, and then I'm going to let you guys get loose with it. Yes? So my name is Kendra. I'm a positive psychology practitioner. I'm a mother who moms hard with my whole heart. I am a badass ballroom dancer, and my superpower is that I have the unique ability to see people and hold enough space for them to grow beyond what they believe is possible. The accomplishments I am most proud of are being a first-gen college grad and valedictorian. Hey! And... <laughs> Thank you. I'll let you clap. That's fine. <laughs> and then starting a nonprofit that served more than 25,000 meals to the underprivileged and homeless in my community. 
All right, now remember, is this encapsulating of everything that I am as a human being? Absolutely, does it mean that I'm not flawed? <laughs> Tragically. <laughs> no. I'm allowed to look at my life and say that there are things that are good, that when I walk into that elevator and I get to sit, stand in front of that client, that potential client, that potential employer, that potential for me, I'm allowed to stand fully in my power and know who I am and know that I am worth it. Yes? That is what I want for you. So now I'm gonna let you guys bring it all together, but before we do, I wanna give you an exercise that you can do to move the energy in your body, to shift the energy of a room. We talked a lot about stress today, and when we are in an emotional state, uh, you might have heard the phrase being hijacked. Anybody ever he hear that phrase? You get hijacked by your thoughts or negative emotions. Before I let you guys do your pitches, I wanna give you a little gift. Raise your hand if you've ever uh, been to Tony Robbins. Anybody? Okay, so what we're gonna do is the make your move, yes? And so uh, Tony Robbins, he does this thing where he says, make your move, and then everybody just goes bananas, right? So uh, we're gonna do that. But the way that we do it is by recognizing that you have an emotional state that you can alter at any moment. When I feel heavy, when I feel weighed down, when I feel stuck, I got the rumination going, I'm stuck in the negative thoughts, I'm stuck in negative self-talk. This is what I personally do to get myself out. We have to pay attention to our focus, our physiology, and our language. Language is so immensely powerful. We've already talked today that positive experiences only work with intention, right? Our brain doesn't lock them in, so we have to choose it. So this is gonna be what we focus on. Our physiolo physiology is the way we move and allow our bodies to move. If you are like me, you have spent two years in a home office <laughs> in your yoga pants and movement has become chair yoga. <laughs> so being able to move your body and get comfortable and shifting that energy is important. And the third one is language. I'm gonna do a visualization with you right now. I want you to be able to access this emotional state that I'm talking about, and I don't care how far back we have to go. Are you willing to go with me? Okay, I'm gonna move my hair off my mic. So go ahead and sit comfortably. Close your eyes, if you're willing. I know sometimes in these big group rooms, you're like, I ain't closing my eyes. Get your hands off my bag, Janice. But if you're willing, I wanna invite you to close your eyes. We're gonna start with three deep breaths, six seconds in, six seconds out, starting now. Breathing in. And out. And in. And out. and in, and at the top of this inhale, I want you to hold it, hold, relax your forehead, open your mouth, relax your jaw, and give me an audible sigh. <sighs> in one more time, hold, drop your jaw, audible sigh. <sighs> With your eyes closed, Notice the noise in the room, the hum of the AC. Feel the points of your body connected to your seat, to the floor. Really allow your awareness to be fully here. Notice your breath, the rise and fall of your chest. Now in your mind's eye, I want you to recall a moment of joy.
breathe deep. Let it out. I want you to allow yourself to fully relive that moment of joy. Where were you? Who were you with? What were you doing? Allow yourself to be fully in your body, experiencing joy. What does joy feel like in your body? How does it change the way you breathe? when you open your eyes in the moment and you take in what is around you in this moment of joy. How does it shift the way that you see the world around you? Now in your mind's eye, in this same moment of joy, I want you to zoom in on the face of anyone who is with you. And I want you to ask yourself, what three things had to happen in order for that person in that moment to be real? be true for you. What choice did you have to make? What risk did you take? What words did you speak? What money did you have to spend? What relationships had to be let go, mended, forged in fire? I'm going to give you a word. And I want this word to represent this moment for you. That word is yes. Yes. Yes to love. Yes to risk. Yes to choice. Yes. One more deep breath in and out. In and on the out, I want you to say it with me. Yes. In and out. Yes. Say it again loud. I want it to get weird in the lobby. You with me? In. Out. Yes. Yes. Oh my God. You guys did so good. All right. Open your eyes. Come back into the room with me. That. That is how easy it is to access joy. It is the moment that we allow ourselves to have a quiet pause to take in an experience of the past. Yes? So at this point, I would normally ask, what did you see, where did you go, what did you do? Uh, but there's 300 of you and only one of me. So I'm assuming it was great. Hands up if it was awesome. <laughs> Yay! So I gave you a word. That word 
is yes. From now on, in neuro-linguistic programming, we call them anchor words. So you imagine a positive or you imagine an emotional anchor and you assign a word to it. I gave you the word yes. So your word from now on is yes. Yes when I want to choose joy. Yes when I want to feel empowered. Yes when I want to feel content. Yes? Yes. Ah, so good. <laughs> I love it. Okay. This last part is make your move. This is where the magic comes together. So we're going to stand up. All right. Ooh. I'm sweating, y'all. I love this part. It's my favorite. <laughs> all right. So this is where we bring it all together. Remember, we're talking about changing our emotional state. We have learned today that our emotions matter. When we are sad, when we are heavy, when we are weighed down, it hampers, it inhibits our ability to show up in the world. So this is your move. When you are ready to shift, when you say, you know what, I'm done being stuck. When you say, you know what, I'm going to walk into that room, I'm going to ask for that raise, I'm going to have this hard conversation, I'm going to confront my kid, I'm going to leave him, I'm going to marry him, I'm going to go there, I'm going to do this, I'm going to write the book, I'm going to start the business, whatever it is, my answer is yes. And when I allow that energy to come in, I literally, I'm vibrating right now, yes? All right. We have to make a move. We need a way for the energy to leave our body. I'm going to show you mine. Yes? I'm going to be vulnerable first. Are you ready? Ready? Yes! <laughs> yes! Yes! That's my move. And um, my boyfriend can tell you that that is real. I do it all the time. Like, he'll find me in my office. I'm like, yes! And then I get on the Zoom call. You know what I mean? I got I to gotta get it out. <laughs> right? So you are going to make your move, but I want you to break the vanity barrier. We all got it. Yes? We all want to look cute while we're trying to be badasses, and sometimes that doesn't happen. Okay? So I want you to let it go. This isn't about looking cute. This is about feeling powerful. Have you guys ever heard of power poses? Yeah? You want a superwoman with me? Yeah. My men, you can superman with me too. Hell yes. That's right. Yeah? Cross the finish line, arms wide, take up space. Holy smokes, look at you. You guys are a brave, beautiful bunch, yeah? Take up space. Wonder Woman, I am. Celebrate. Yes. All right, so you can pick whatever you want, whatever you want. I'm going to give you five seconds. And when I say make your move, I'm going to channel. I'm so on fire right now. Uh, I'm like vibrating. I can't wait for you guys to give me this energy back. All right. When I say make your move, you're going to say yes, and you are going to move your body. There's no wrong move. Are you ready? All right. Here we go. Five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Make your move. Yes. Make your move. Yes. Here we go. Huh? Yay. Now, quiet, feel the room. Feel that. It can almost bring tears to my eyes. When people say, how do I affect change? My love, you show up. That's it. Everything else is icing on the cake. It's cherries on top. You show up. That choice alone does this. What did you do? Did you tell me a vulnerable story? No, what did you do? You literally fully embodied joy for yourself and feel this room. That is how we can affect change, when we know who we are. Well, what a gift. After the last two years, for me, this is my passion. It's what I love doing and being able to be in front of you and not in a Brady Bunch window on a computer. Uh, thank you. Uh